Raiders of the North Sea. This is a game that is not a new one. I don't know why I hadn't heard of it until recently. And then I started seeing pictures floating around on the Geek, probably because some new game in the system came out or some expansion. But again, I don't remember exactly how is it in my paths across that of this game. But then I got interested in it and I gave it a try. So Raiders of the North Sea is a game about Vikings and about raids, hence, hence, hence the name. And this game players control groups of Vikings are trying to impress the big chief by putting together expeditions and going out and looting and destroying and pillaging monasteries, uh, attacking fortresses, and the sort of thing that we saw in the TV show, we have reasons to believe also that historically happened. But the overall flow is much more peaceful than you would expect. Uh, some of your game pieces will still die, but it is a Euro game, not a particularly brutal game. You don't have a sense of violence emerging from from the game. Um, very nice presentation, lots of wooden bits, lots of nice cardboard, nice art on the components, on the, on the cards, so very nice looking game. Question is, is it also fun to play? Well, let's, let's, have, let's have a look, let's have a closer look and then we'll talk about that. This is the board of the game and I wanted to show you how the board looks like at the beginning of the game at setup. There is a lot of stuff that goes on the board so it may take a little bit to set it up. But, you know, two or three players working together shouldn't take too long. Here you have the area that represents the village where the players will build the resources and when they are ready they'll go raiding those areas there. And those areas are the ones that take a little bit to set up because you need to put the plunder tokens that include livestock, valkyrie tokens, iron, gold, you put them all in a bag, you uh, shuffle them in there and then you place them randomly in those uh, in those square areas based on the number that you see there. So three randomly placed there, four randomly placed there, and so on and so forth. And then you also place those workers there. We'll talk in a minute about what they do. Those workers, I guess they're supposed to be, they're supposed to be Vikings, but I can't uh, help thinking that they are Galactus. Just, uh, it's a game about a lot of little Galactus minions or Galactus cosplayers. Um, and that's how the board looks like and that's the general idea you build resources here you go there you raid uh, the various areas collecting resources and then you build more resources to go there more resources and so on and so forth now a little more um, up close in terms of showing you the map but also in terms of talking about gameplay this is a worker placement game with a nice clever twist to the very well known idea of worker placement. It is a worker placement and worker picking. Place a worker, pick a worker. Each, in each turn you always start with a worker from your personal reserve. You will always have one in your personal pool. And your turn starts with you placing the token on an available area on the board. And you see these ovals here represent available areas. And you place uh, one of your tokens, one of your workers, one of your Galactus impersonators in the one of those areas and you activate the action corresponding to the location. Once you're done, you pick another another worker from the board, not the one that you just put down. So now, for example, I decide to pick this one up and I also activate that action. It's an interesting idea. You activate actions not just because, just, just when you place a worker, but also when you get a worker. So really, no matter what happens, you start a turn with a token and after you add and pick one up, you end up with a token at the end and you will use that one next turn. Very clever idea, uh, which means that the players affect which actions are available during gameplay. Here at the village, you can see only three actions are available now. Yes, there is a fourth one that is whichever I'll decide, whichever I'll decide to activate when I get my guy there. But then, oh again, there's a limitation based on where the available tokens are right now. Also, uh, the order, the order of the actions may be important because maybe I want to perform a certain action. One of those actions I like to perform it before I perform 
another action, but I can't because I can perform that action only by removing the token, which I do after I place my guy. So that is uh, the trick. That's the trick idea. As for raiding, it works in the same way. As you can see, raiding areas also have areas where you can place your token, your worker there. Uh, and when you do so, you need to demonstrate that you have the necessary requirements. Here, for example, I need three provisions and a crew of at least R2 hired crew members. We'll talk about those in a bit. So I spend my provisions, I demonstrate that I have enough crew members, and then I choose one of the loot areas associated with this region, and I simply get the get the plunder that is there and I add it to my to my personal pool I can then use these resources to buy stuff make offerings etc convert into other resources as you may notice I also got I also got another another worker this one is gray there are black gray and white workers and some areas of the board on the board act differently depending on the type of worker that you place there for example the gray workers are very good at making food or producing provisions at the mill but they they're not very good at producing money at the silversmith because if I place a black worker there the silversmith gives me three coins if I place a, a gray or a white one only two but you can see when you are um, when you're raiding the idea is still the same get one pick one and get the stuff that that you find in there uh, generally speaking more or less if you know worker placements and you and you got this idea build the resources here and go raiding you probably expect what you're gonna find here there is an action that gives you coins provisions that are needed to raid armory this is an action that when you take it you spend iron and you get two points of armory or two coins for a point of armory you start at zero this is the armory track and this is simply each increment that you get there is a bonus that you may use later in combat some increments as you can see are also connected with small yellow numbers and those are victory points that you earn at the end of the game if you have that if you're at that level or higher uh, <clears throat> Mill, Silversmith, the Longhouse, you can convert livestock into provisions or you can pick one of these tokens here, the offerings. You need to produce the resources that are printed here, so to get this token I need to go there, activate that action and then pay two livestock and two gold and then I can get this token here which will give me six victory points at the end of the game. Replenish that and that's and that is that for that part but i mentioned uh, i mentioned the crew members uh, briefly this is a very important element of the game it's a worker placement that also has however a large element uh, that revolves around cards uh, it's almost i don't, I don't call it a deck building but for the crew building you will hire crew members um, you will get cards in your hand and you'll pay silver to actually hire them and put them face up in front of you to use their abilities. Then you'll send them on rates. So when on rates you pick up Valkyrie tokens, each Valkyrie token uh, kills one of your crew members that you have to discard. But some actually, uh, I wouldn't say that they enjoy it or maybe they do, but they have abilities that are triggered if they're killed in a raid. Uh, some, for example, give you victory points if they are killed in a raid. So, I guess they do. They do enjoy the idea. Oh, Vikings. Oh, Vikings. So, as for these cards, here you have a combat value that is used when you are attacking outposts that do have a component based on combat. That is, in certain when you're attacking certain outposts or certain fortresses, monasteries, when you're attacking certain locations, you total the number of combat points that you have, you roll dice, and if you go over a certain number, you, you get extra benefits. There's the cost to hire the crew member. Yeah, you have an ability that is used whenever the text tells you that is used and it may vary. And yeah, you see this icon here. Um, this icon here is the effect that the card allows you to trigger if you play directly from hand when you're using this action here. So when I'm using the town hall with that play symbol, I mean, that's what, it rem that's what, what it reminds me of. Like, click and pressing play and now 
there's a little mercenary doing oh, a little movie for me. So this action allows me to trigger the effects directly from hand. This action allows me to get to get new cards from the deck into my hand and this action here allows me to hide cards from my hand in front of me and when they're in front of me face up is when then I can use them when I'm raiding when I'm raiding stuff as for the rates the general idea I already explained but also as I said some rates have a component of fighting such as all well, that raiding there some uh, elements remain the same. You still need to produce and consume certain provisions. You still need to have a minimum number of crew members. However, then you also get to add together the combat values that, that you have with you. And combat numbers are produced by the red number on the cards of the active crew members that may be with you. Combat numbers also produce, remember the armory track, that is a bonus that you add there, and maybe other game bonuses. And then you roll dice, and the number of dice that you roll is indicated by uh, the icon printed on the board. These are six-sided dice, but the distribution tends to the average, that is the numerical distribution has a two, a five, and then two threes and two fours. So we'll tend towards the the middle of the road rather than incredibly bad rolls or incredibly amazing rolls. It also means that if you're rolling a die you know you can count at least on a 2 and if you're rolling 2 you can count at least on a 4 so that's... Now you still have a random element as you should when you're raiding an outpost or a monastery or a fortress but it's a little more reliable. So after combat you simply compare your total combat value with the icons that you see here again in the locations that you can write and that and that add those icons if you meet or exceed the first number you get the corresponding number of victory points if you meet or exceed the second number then you get the higher amount of victory points the game continues until there is only one set of plunder left in fortresses, fortresses being that type of raidable area there, or the game may be over when the offering draw pile is exhausted, this pile here, that's from which those tiles come, also uh, if there are no Valkyries, Valkyrie tokens left on the board. When that occurs you count victory points, you should have at that point the victory points that you earn simply by standard actions that give you victory points and you keep record of those on that track there. Also the uh, armory track may give you victory points, also here is the Valkyrie track, you keep track of the of your crew members that were killed in raids and brought to Valhalla riding together with the Valkyries and that also earns you victory points. Some crew members uh, may have special abilities that give you victory points and then also plunder. The plunder that you still have that you haven't converted in uh, the resources is worth the three points at the end of the game. You total your victory points from all possible sources and at that point the player with the highest total is the winner of the game. I enjoyed this game much more than I expected. Uh, when it comes to worker placement, the competition out there is pretty strong because there are many games uh, that well are fun and tight and have very interesting mechanics. And sometimes one wonders, well, is there still room for a new one? I know that there is definitely room for a new worker placement game in my collection and that slot has been taken by Raiders of the North Sea because it works, because the mechanics are really, really smart. In a sense, the twist on the worker placement is not big. Um, the idea that you take, take upon, uh, put upon, place upon, take upon, uh, but it works. It really creates a nice flow, it really gives you opportunities to mess up with your opponent, to try to block or delay some actions that they clearly need while at the same time you're trying to maximize the actions that you have and trying to accomplish your objectives. In this sense the game definitely has a sort of form of direct interaction. It doesn't feel like multiplayer solo. Yes we are working running around the same town trying to hire work and then we go out in parallel missions. We don't we don't encounter 
each other out there and fight in front of an enemy harbor. Uh, we, 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 we politely take turns doing that. But still, uh, by depleting harbors so that the opponent would be well suited to attack by attacking certain areas and removing certain resources that the opponent may be interested in, uh, by taking several of those core tiles so that the opponents may be interested in taking. There are a lot of ways of due to the limited nature of the resources in the game to get in the other player's way and other and other player's skin. Uh, many different ways that do not include direct attack. So I like that. I like the game. It, it, it feels like there are a lot of things to do. Yes, a lot of actions to do. You look at the board and like, whoa, like the world is my oyster, or I should say, the world is my treasure chest over for me to go for, for me to grab all that I can. But of course, to get there, you have to build your little engine of resources. You have to build your crew, etc., etc., etc. So uh, there is a strange balance here between the sense of abundance that you see on the board, and of course, what is very important. Uh, a sense of limited resources, of competitive race for those limited resources. That I still at the same time doesn't feel like the game um, is too stingy. So there is enough tightness there with the resources and with some uh, abilities being blocked and some not available. Enough stinginess, enough scarcity to make the game interesting to, uh, because if I can just get whatever I want to return, what is, the, what, is, what is the fun in that? What is the challenge? So I had the challenge of maximizing my resources, creating my little crews, sending it out, etc, etc. Well, at the same time, I don't feel too stuck. Yes, you get in my way because you loot at certain areas and that does uh, put me at a disadvantage, but I don't feel like being kicked out of the game. I don't feel like there's nothing else that I can do. So I really like that. I like the fact that the game allows you um, room for maneuver while challenging you to find the best way to exploit that. Uh, allows you a way of annoying the opponents and reducing their chances of victory without a direct elimination, without uh, directly kicking out anything, anybody not to the design. So that makes really for a nice competition, for a nice race. Uh, I like the flow and which of course is like build people in your town, amass resources, go and loot, repeat. We try was a threat before playing the game may feel repetitive but then as some things remain, for example some crew members may remain and, and yeah you need to replenish your your food etc etc but you build a certain momentum and so that's also what allows you although there's a cyclical uh there's a cyclical pattern there because every time that you go out you consume some resources yet still is not completely circular more like a spiral you go back and forth but overall uh, you build up enough strength to attack the bigger places and that is really satisfying it's really satisfying that you have such a linear simple straightforward idea that however also has a sense of progression and it doesn't feel like you're just simply doing the same thing over and over again so very impressed, very impressed by the design uh, that I, I don't even remember how I stumbled upon it, mainly ran by, by chance really, but, but I'm really happy that I did. This definitely is a game that has a place in my collection, uh, maybe even a place of honor among Euro games, uh, worker placement games, because really it is one that stands out. There are many games of this type, send out a uh, place, a uh, wooden piece there, activate an action, etc. etc. is not a revolutionary idea, but there are enough twists here, and most importantly, the idea is implemented well enough to make this game really stand out, to make this game really particularly good.